Hi, welcome to this video on interview questions on embedded systems. These are the most important interview questions which are asked by the embedded industry, especially automotive industries. Let's start with what is an embedded system is. A system which is dedicated for a specific task or a set of tasks is called as an embedded system. It is a combination of hardware and software wherein software is embedded onto the hardware. This is what is an embedded system. What is a compiler? A compiler is a software program that translates the code written in one programming language into a machine level language. Or there is a possibility that even the compiler converts the code written in one programming language into an assembly code. So some compiler supports that. You can also generate an assembly code from a compiler. Example C code can be converted into an assembly code. So this is the compiler job. What is an assembler? An assembler is a software program again that converts assembly language into a machine code. Okay, example 8051 assembly code into a machine code. What is a cross compiler? Yes, we just now discussed the compiler and uh, assembler. Then we also have a cross compiler. A cross compiler is a software which runs on one type of processor like x86 but generate an executable code for a different targets like 8051 and so on. For example, your compiler might be running on x86 desktop machine but it generates a code which you are going to deploy to the, uh, the controllers like 8051. That is what is a cross compiler. Example. A kill software has a built-in cross compiler which converts the code what you have written for a targets like 8051. Then what is a cross assembler? In the same way as a cross compiler, we have a cross assembler. Again, it is a software which runs on one type of processor like x86 but generate a machine code for a different targets like 8051. Again, a kill software has a built-in cross assembler is desktop an example of embedded system absolutely no desktop machines we cannot call them or categorize them as an embedded system there are many differences between the desktop machine and embedded system okay so desktop machines are a general purpose systems okay general computing systems so let's see what are the differences between the general computing machines such as desktop machines and embedded systems. Uh, general purpose systems have a generic hardware and software whereas an embedded system will have a specific hardware and software. The general purpose computing system contains the operating system whereas embedded system may or may not con contain an operating system. Okay, If it contains an operating system it is called as RTOS, real-time operating system. So some application we may not need an operating system. So applications uh, in general purpose com computing are alterable by user, whereas uh, in embedded system it's not uh, easy for the user to alter the program which is deployed onto the embedded hardware. Here the performance is a key factor. Faster is the better. Now, for example, you press a uh, uh, key or a mouse okay so it it may take one second or two seconds so it doesn't really matter much whereas in uh, in embedded system uh, it's very very important so it is application specific requirement so it is not well tailored for power saving modes whereas embedded systems are highly well tailored for power saving modes yes response time is not critical as i give an example of when you click a button or a click on a mouse it may open an icon or it may open after some time okay so it's not time critical whereas embedded systems are very very time critical okay so general computing system need not be deterministic whereas embedded system need to be a deterministic so these are the some of the differences between the general computing system and an embedded system so what is a code memory? 
It is a memory where program or algorithm gets stored in the form of hex file or a binary bits, which we call it as a machine code. Okay. So every controller will have the code memory. Okay. Most often we call it as a flash memory, wherein we deploy the hex file or the bin file. What is the data memory in embedded system? A data memory is like a scratch pad, for example, random access memory which can be used to store a temporary data. Data gets erased as soon as the supply goes off. What kind of loop is better? Count up or count down? Always it is better to have a countdown in an embedded system. What is a memory leak? When you don't free the allocated memory which you have done using malloc or a calloc function, then we call it as a memory leak. So if you don't free that memory which is allocated, then that memory is blocked for all the processes. So we call this as a memory leak. So what are the communication protocols which are used in embedded systems and the automotive systems? So the most widely is the CAN protocol, then LIN protocol, FlexRay protocol, I2C, SPI, MOST, KWP2000. These are some of the important communication protocols which are most widely used in uh, the automotive industry as well as uh, some protocols are used in the embedded system. Is infinite loop necessary in embedded system? Absolutely yes, because the application will be running continuously. So you need to have an infinite loop in embedded system. What is the purpose of an embedded system? Yes, the purpose of embedded system is to collect the data, store it and represent it in a good form. Data communication, data processing, monitoring and control. So these are the purposes of uh, an embedded system. So what is embedded firmware? It's nothing but a control algorithm or a program or instructions or a configuration setting that developer dumps into a code memory. It's nothing but your bin file or a hex file or your machine code that gets into an embedded hardware. So what are the development languages? So we have C, we have C++, Java, Python and so on and also uh, the assembly level programming languages which are used for the developments. What are mnemonics? Most often we heard this word mnemonics. Uh, mnemonics are the instructions of assembly language. For example, move, add, sub, jump if not equal. What are upcodes? So upcodes uh, are basically an abbreviated form of operation code for example if you take an instruction move a comma 30 here we are trying to move 30 into a so this is a two byte instruction whereas move a will have some fixed code of one byte and this data 30 is it takes one byte so normally it takes one machine cycle to execute for move a the code uh, up code is 74 and 30 is another uh, data so similarly for all other instructions what is the the assembly le level language conversion process so it starts with uh, your dot asm files so you might have multiple dot asm files then we have an assembler which converts it to your object file similarly all other dot asm files gets converted to dot obj file then along with the library the linker or a locator converts it into an absolute object file and then from the absolute object file we convert it to an hex file or a, a binary file so this is the assembly language uh, process of generating a machine code what is the advantages of assembly language yes we can write efficient code using uh, assembly language so better memory usage High performance because we can we can write an optimized code. So low level hardware access is possible with the uh, assembly language. It's very difficult with the higher level higher level languages. Of course, the disadvantage is uh, portability. So if you write an assembly code for AT51, then if you change the controller again, all in, all the instruction will change. So you need to have high development time. So again, it depends on the developers non portable yes these are the disadvantages of assembly level programming what is a disassembler 
this assembler again it's a, a reverse engineering where you convert a machine code back into an assembly level language okay so what is the c language conversion process uh, converting a c code into an object file or a hex file so normally we'll have a source file with a dot c extension so if you have multiple dot c files then the cross compiler or a compiler will convert it to an object file so object file along with the library uh, with a linker or a locator gets converted to absolute object file then from the absolute object file we convert it to a hex file so this is the conversion process in c language what is an embedded c very important question very very important question this question has been asked several times by most of the automotive industries and embedded industry so what is the difference between the general c and embedded c embedded c is basically an extension of standard c programming language with additional features like addressing io multiple memory addressing and fixed point arithmetic and so on so c programming language is generally used for developing a desktop applications whereas embedded c is used for development of microcontroller based applications so what are the different data why there are different data types in c of course for better performance and less memory usage for example your data is only of one byte so why do you want to store it in in, in a floating point uh, data type or a double so that's the reason we have different data types for better performance and memory memory usage also while retrieving from the memory you should know uh, how much data to be retrieved from the memory okay thank you so much uh, for watching this video i wish you all the best for your interview i hope it will definitely help you if it helps please give me a feedback and please don't forget to like and subscribe and share this channel thank you so much for watching this video